So we're about to knock out this really easy, quick renovation. Just re-verifying my square foot, that's 60 by 10. That puts us at 600 square feet. Um, if you watched the video when I did the leveling with dirt, you'd know we already did the soil prep for this area. So, that was for the easy part. Let's get it. Okay, when we did the leveling your lawn with soil video, we came in here and we did pretty much all the seed to soil bed prep that you are going to want to do if you're knocking out and overseed. This is not a full renovation. This is me working with what's already here to establish a new lawn. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the other half of this, mainly because it's just gonna make math easier moving forward. Picking up this extra 600 square feet is gonna put me somewhere around 3,000 square feet, which means I'll just treat it like 3,000 square feet. I think it's actually closer to about 28, 20, 28, five, but uh, close enough. I want you to see where we're at. This is kind of what you're gonna be wanting to look for when you're moving through this phase. Um, we opened up the canopy really well, coming through with that, uh, power rake. I got rid of most of the weeds that I could get rid of, bearing what I can get my hands on and what's legal out here in Germany. There are some still undesirable grasses in here. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this right here, I don't want this in here. I don't want this stuff in here, but this isn't mine. It doesn't have to be perfect and it's going to look a lot better. And come in the spring, I can actually come through and uh, hand select and pick these things out one by one. So as you can see, we got a little bit of extra growth. So with that extra growth, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bring out my big blue over here, the Cobalt 80 volt series lawnmower. And I'm just gonna clean everything up, bag it up, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, stay tuned. All right, and this is big blue. Got the bag on it, took the mulching plug out. I like this mower, um, haven't really done a review on it. It's pretty quiet and it gets the job done. the gist of it we can take big blue and retire her put her off to the side so the next step we want to talk about is seeding right now typically depending on your grass type when you're doing an overseed you want to be somewhere between six pounds per thousand square feet so for this area I'm gonna go a little bit on the heavier end just because of how thin it is. I have some literal bare spots out here that I wanna address. So cut that in half, cause it's 600 square feet. I'm gonna end up with right up underneath four pounds per thousand square feet. So that's what I'm gonna be doing to this side of the plot. And we have some trouble areas that we definitely wanna pay some special attention to, which we'll go over here in a minute. So a couple things before we get into the seating. When I'm seating, I wanna start out on a lower setting. Um, just to make sure I'm getting even coverage, especially with working in a tight space like this. Uh, make sure I get multiple passes. Uh, and I don't really want to throw too much more seed over here, over yonder on the other side of my lawn. And that's mostly because that lawn is fine. Like, yeah, it's got some heat spots that's uh, still recovering from, but ultimately I don't want to overcrowd. Seed isn't cheap anymore. I don't know if it ever really was, <laughs> but you can cause yourself a lot of heartache and pain um, if 
you throw down too much seed too hard too fast so this is one that you want to definitely pay attention to the label take your time with and do it right the first time rather than having overcrowding your lawn dying out like a couple of youtubers we've seen over the past couple of years so um yeah let's get it Now when we said we were gonna address some hard spots with some special attention, typically it's gonna be your edges is where you're gonna struggle the most to get your grass to come in. So I like to either overdress them or come back with a nice little hand crank like this to make sure I get those edges in tip-top shape. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is this. Work that seed in to the edges. That way, you make sure it doesn't go anywhere. When that runoff happens from the water, we know our seed stays in place. That's what your end result should be looking like. Uh, like I mentioned, I like to overdress those edges as well. And once I work that soil uh, with the weasel, I come back behind with my blower and I gently just blow the residual seed back right on top of that area I just worked in. That way, you know, we just got that double time coverage and we can really hope to get the kind of success we're looking for. Now this next step is completely optional, but I highly recommend it especially if uh, you have as many bare areas like I've been dealing with, like I will be dealing with, um, is peat moss. So peat moss is gonna help in a couple different areas. One of the areas is definitely gonna help in is uh, moisture management. It's just gonna be a really good indicator on whether or not I'm keeping the soil and the seed moist enough for germination to encourage that germination. Another thing that's gonna help is uh, give it a little bit of extra protection. It's gonna cover it up, very minute, minuscule, uh, but nevertheless, it, it, it is there. So um, let's go ahead and get this spread it out with my uh, peat moss spreader. I really like this. Um, helps capture all the debris, and it really makes this, it just makes light work of this whole process. Now at this point, irrigation is key. We're gonna wanna keep this seed as moist as possible throughout this germination process. The way that I'm gonna get that done, I'm opting to use the Melnor Sunrise Timer. It's a really cheap timer, very affordable, 25 bucks on Amazon. The unique thing about this timer is that as the sun rises every morning, I currently have it set to water the lawn for 30 minutes. That should hold me seeing how this side of the house doesn't get that much uh, sunlight. It stays in the shade for the most part, other than this front end over here. So I'm thinking we're gonna be good. I got that hooked up to an impact sprayer, uh, impact sprinkler, so we should be good to go. Now at this point, you're really done. Uh, everything I tell you from here on out are just bonus tips, right? So if you notice, I had some compaction, well, more so dried localized areas, right? And with the localized dry areas, there will be a formation of compaction until hydration gets in there and I get something growing. Once I get something growing, we're good to go. That clay soil is actually a pro and it works in your advantage. So as long as you keep the proper amount of moisture in it, you can see that proof right here on my side plot that I did the full renovation on this spring out here in Germany. Now I'm gonna use this product called Foreplay. It's from my good buddies over there at the College L. Um, this has hydrotain in it, sea extra, humate, and some non-ionic surfactant. This is gonna help me get that moisture reestablished in those dry localized spots. And another thing about this product is hydrotain has been shown to increase seed germination as well. So um, hopefully we can take advantage of that benefit as well. I'm gonna make sure that I get my edges real good. If you don't have foreplay, you can always use your traditional hydrotain. 
pretty much doing the same thing. Um, it's just that the foreplay, <laughs> well, it's got four different things in it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the sprinkler on to get this watered in. About five, 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go. Now, some extra things to keep in mind. I hate this hose. I'm gonna switch out these hoses. It takes too long for the pressure to build up. Um, but yeah, we're good to go. So, so things that you're gonna wanna keep in mind uh, before I bring you back in about 10 days to show you the results of this. Yes, you're gonna get the results in all in one video. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're timing this out properly, right? Other than getting the water down, picking the right seed, and um, actually taking the time to work it into the edges, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have at least 45 days from seed germination until your first frost to give this the best chance of survival, period. If you make sure you do that, well, you'll have these kind of results in 10 days. Yes, sir. Let's talk about results, people. We see this lawn on Monday. <laughs> Look, I like perennial rye, and this is one of the reasons why. You do the things that you're supposed to do, you keep it moist. Five days later, we got even germination throughout. Now, um, this is just proof in the pudding that this works. Very simple process. We didn't put out any starter fertilizer. We didn't do anything special as far as mechanical aeration. All we did was get good seed to soil contact, maintain adequate moisture, and boom, we got germination just like that. Now, I am gonna help it out a lot, but I'm not gonna use your traditional starter fur. I'm gonna use this instead. 31818 from Simple Lawn Solutions. This is what we're gonna be using. Now, the reason why I'm going with this particularly is because I still wanna control that growth of the new grass and the grass that's already established. I don't wanna throw down too much nitrogen. I know that it could benefit from potassium and a little bit of phosphorus just to help with root establishment while we still have the season in our favor. So far, it's been plenty of moisture in the ground. I literally have only ran the sprinkler, I think for two days, and then we started getting showers nonstop. So we came out of the drought, thankfully, but with that, I've actually had some issues in my main lawn. That's for another video though. But look guys, it's really that simple. Um, now we just have to wait probably another two weeks. I think I'm gonna go another two weeks before I put a first mow on it. If you subscribe and stay tuned, I will show you the updates along the way when we see how this looks. And you know, I think it's gonna look pretty good. It's definitely gonna look really good by mid-October. It's really this simple. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, peace.